Hey there YouTubes, this is Grimweird coming back at you with more Project Ozone 3 Kappa Mode playthrough action for Minecraft 1.12.2. Um, so last episode we opened up the um, Twilight Forest and we uh, got a really lucky uh, world dimension generation. Uh, there's a questing ram right next to our portal. Um, so now we need to go fight the Twilight bosses. Um, and uh, before I went and did that, my sword was, it was okay. Uh, I'm not a big fan of just the basic tinker swords. Um, I could have jazzed it up a bit with some, uh, with a bunch of uh, better materials and uh, modifiers and whatnot. Uh, but I wanted to make a laser gun. Um, I quite enjoy the laser gun. Um, so we'll talk about that. Uh, I went ahead and pushed on with Astral Sorcery, even though supposedly uh, we can't get any credit for it yet, but, so I'll talk about that. Um, I leveled up my Astral Sorcery perks and my laser gun, we'll talk about that. And then maybe we'll start into the bosses in the Twilight Forest. Uh, so first let's talk about the gun. So what we've got here is a Kellene laser gun. Um, I went with, let's see, uh, which one does it? A dark wood tough tool rod. So dark wood is one of the nether X. Well, I think it's a Natura tree, but it's uh, found in the nether. Um, so I grew up some of that. It gives dark traveler and ecological. Ecological, just like a normal wooden um, rod, uh, lets it regen some durability over time. Uh, here is the uh, dark wood if you want to see what it looks like. Um, I found one of these in the nether pretty easy. In fact, I think I found it my first trip there. Um, but uh, Dark Traveler is sort of a beast. It's uh, normally something that you find on Chaos um, or Chaotic um, Tinker stuff. And what it does is it just sort of uh, does random damage to stuff around you. Um, hostile mobs around you when you're holding the gun in your hand. Uh, just tick off like, I don't know, it looks like maybe two to five damage every once in a while. Um, there's some randomness to it, uh, but when you're surrounded by lots of mobs, it can definitely add up. Um, so that's been cool. Um, if we then take a look at, um, it's got a Kellene pipe piece. If you're not familiar with the laser gun, the pipe piece um, is what determines most of your durability and it's also what determines what you repair with however it does not determine the attack and I think that's crucial um, so it's one of the big differences between the laser gun and most other tinkers thing the pipe piece is your durability and uh, and what you repair with but it's actually the laser medium that is what determines your laser power you can see it there uh, in sort of a darker green on the third one down. The emirotic laser medium uh, determines a laser power of 10 and a range of 24. Um, so the Kellene pipe piece has a really high durability. Um, I've never made one of those before because I've never played uh, with Kellene. That is one of those, uh, what is it, Landcraft? I'm already getting confused of Landcraft and Lordcraft and yada yada craft. Okay, so a Kellene ingot is Landcraft. We got that in Landia. Um, and I'm carrying around some spares in case I need to uh, repair it. Um, and then, uh, what else? Oh, it has Hail Hydra. So Hail Hydra is another one that I think is um, usually on Chaos or Chaotic uh, material. It is stupid powerful. Um, sort of annoying also. Basically, it just causes, dis um, well, it has two things, both a defensive and an offensive side. The offensive side is that it causes explosions under the mobs all around you and blasts them up into the air, doing damage to them. And then they take more damage, as fall damage, when they come back down. It doesn't break blocks. It will occasionally, if the monster dies and the loot falls right as an explosion is going off, it will occasionally destroy loot. Um, so that is one thing to be careful about. 
And then the other thing is, is that if you're taking damage with Hail Hydra on, uh, you get um, an absorption for uh, buff on you. So it's got a great defense as well. Um, and we'll show you what that looks like in a moment. Vindictive is on my Emiratic Laser Medium. Uh, the Laser Medium is uh, Power 10, Range 24. I usually like to go with the Refined Glowstone, um, but uh, which is Power 10, Range 40 for more range. However, um, Mechanism is pretty heavily gated in this mod pack, so we're not going to get there too fast. What Vindictive does is that it gives you, I think, uh, a 20% chance to gain one heart or one half heart every time you hit. Now the laser gun fires fast enough and from range that that could actually be a nice defense for us. Uh, we've also got hearts on it from a Restonia uh, battery. Um, one thing I can mention is that it's sometimes hard to figure out not all materials are available for laser mediums and for batteries. So if you want to check that out um, type in medium and then these are the laser mediums you can build there is a stone one that is only usable to make yourself a, a, a laser medium cast so in other words this cast can be made with a stone laser medium but you can't actually use the stone laser medium in uh, the gun and then these um, looks like five ten about 15 different ones are available in this mod pack um, so you can see they range from, you know, low powers, 2, 3, etc., um, up through a variety of different powers. Um, I often use uh, the Refined Glowstone. Sassy does extra... It turns all your hits against bosses into criticals. And also Illuminati um, will outline things in white, outline mobs in white, um, allowing you to see them through walls um, and see them in the dark much better. Um, and it has a power 10 range 40. Um, Palace is 9 and 17. Uh, Diamatine and Emiratic. Uh, these are both, uh, they're not the empowered version. Uh, you can just use a normal um, emerald or diamond through your atomic reconstructor here. Um, and they're both 10 and 24. Uh, I went with the Emiratic for the Vindictive, which can give us uh, health back on hits. Uh, Morgan Le Fay uh, can also do so, add some damage. Um, and then of course you've got ones like Infinity, which are Laser Power 65, Range 100, uh, Chaotic, which is crazy. It has Dark Traveler on it, uh, which we're getting much, much, much cheaper from the Dark Wood um, handle that we're using. Um, but anyway, and then if you want to see which uh, materials are available for batteries, you can hit battery, and then there's these guys. So most people, uh, including myself in the past, have usually gone with a uh, Manulin battery. It has the best energy capacity at 120,000 RF of the early materials that you can get a hold of. Um, however, um, I've sort of changed my mind on that with this build. Um, I went with the Restonia for hearts. What Hearts does is it does extra damage when you are at full health. Um, some people will say that, you know, if you have like a bunch of bobbly heart containers or if you have the nutrition um, add-on where you end up with like orange hearts, yellow hearts, green hearts, blue hearts, that it'll just get tougher and tougher and tougher and tougher. I do not believe that's true. What it does do is if you're at 100% hearts, then it does a lot more damage. And then if you're near death, it does less damage. Um, and then, of course, there are other ones here. Um, now, Hearts, or the Restonia one, only has 80,000 RF, as opposed to the 120,000 RF for Cold-Blooded. Um, but it doesn't go through power that fast. So unless you go on, like, a very long killing spree, or unless you go, um, you forget to charge it in between hunts, um, you should be fine with 80,000. So do consider that an option because Hearts is pretty awesome. Um, yeah, and so then there's a few other ones that I think are less interesting. Another reason people often go um, Manulin is because Cold-Blooded does extra damage uh, when you're hitting something which is unwounded. 
however and that is cool at first however I find that once you get the thing leveled up you get some quartz on it um, you uh, get some other benefits uh, in the mod pack that you're one-shotting anything without cold-blooded so then that point becomes sort of moot and then finally um, let's see we've got so I talked about Restonian Hearts, Amaratic and Vindictive, Kellyn and Pipe Peace, um, and the Dark Wood. So um, currently this has also got Sharpestest, so I've put a bunch of Nether Quartz on it. I've embossed it with Signalum for Bloody Mary. Um, Bloody Mary uh, does, uh, it does a bunch of extra damage based on I forget what. Oh, I think what it does is that um, the more damage you do to something, then the more damage you do. In other words, it doesn't matter when you're one-shotting something. However, when you're fighting something super tough or a boss, uh, the more damage you do, the higher your damage gets. Um, so it's uh, excellent for you know helping with um, boss killing, from what I understand. I haven't tested that out yet. Um, luck 3, of course, is going to give me good looting. And Reinforce 3 means, you know, I'm, I'm not going through Kelly very fast. So that is all good. Um, the other nice thing about the uh, thing is it's got... Uh, it's got... where is it? It's got a durability of 3,250, which isn't bad, um, and that is uh, based on the pipe piece, which is Kellyn, which has a high one, and then the uh, the other, another reason I took the dark wood handle is it's got a handle bonus of 1.3, so that's another, you know, 1.3 times the high level of Kellyn. Uh, and then also you can see in sort of... Uh, uh, cyan colored right under the XP that is anchored so I have put anchors on um, spectral uh, specter anchors on most of my gear you can see anchored 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 um, on all of this stuff and that is the uh, specter anchor from random things using ectoplasm so each of those is uh, six iron and some ectoplasm which i am getting from the uh, the specter bonsai so um, that is the gun let's go take a look at it in action real quick um, let's go ahead and go to landia so obviously i have a lot of points on this gun already um, that was for two reasons uh, so the other reason, which I should go into real quick so that you don't don't think the gun is all, the only reason why I'm decimating these guys. Um, if we take a look at my book here, another reason I went into um, Astral Sorcery so quick is that their perk tree is really powerful. So the first thing I took was Dissidia. So I have attuned myself to Dissidia. We'll come back to that when I talk about Astral Sorcery later in the uh, video. Um, but it gives the first perk point that you put in there, gives 10% uh, added critical hit chance, and it determines how you gain experience. This gains experience by dealing damage. If you attune yourself to some of the other ones, like Armara, um, then you'll get elemental resistances, and you'll gain experience by taking damage. Um, Vicio is plus one reach and you get experience by traveling the world, um, etc, etc. Now the reason I have uh, more of these open than just that is because I went up here and I worked my way around back towards the middle and then that opened up these other three for me. And I haven't taken a Vorcio yet. Um, I probably will. I just got to be careful because I find that when I get into the Vorcio stuff where you get 20% more mining speed and as you work through these uh, more mining speed and more mining speed and more mining speed 
you can get to a point where when you're around your base and you're just trying to break a block in your base, uh, you'd like rip your base apart. Uh, so I have to be a little bit careful about going down that road with me being so fat fingered with my uh, um, stuff and my um, my both of my picks are up around 20 mining speed already uh, so if I go down that path I have to be careful and possibly swap in a slower material for my pick head to not be too damn fast with it but as you can see here the reason I'm bringing this up is that uh, so I was gaining experience by dealing damage, so I leveled up both my perks and my laser gun at the same time by spending three or four hours just killing the crap out of everything in all dimensions the last, uh, last night. Um, and then as I do that, I get extra melee damage, extra projectile damage. I'm focused on melee damage here uh, because, believe it or not, the laser gun is actually a melee weapon. It's a ranged melee weapon in that... Um, it totally works like a melee weapon. You can hit the zombie crab men with it. You can hit uh, Enderman with it. Uh, it just has a range on it. But enough babbling. Let's go kill some stuff. Um, so obviously we've got zombies. Oh, I should do the special stuff first. Okay, so that explosion was dark. No, that explosion was Hail Hydra off the Kellene um, pipe piece. Let's hover down here and watch it go. Now the zombie crab man, when it's taking a few things but not exploding, that was the Dark Traveler. So that hit was Dark Traveler. That hit was Dark Traveler. And zombie crab men uh, are immune to projectiles, and you saw I just shot it. Um, bat. You can see that guy got double tapped by the Dark Traveler, and ooh, these guys have good loot. And also, I can show you that I am one shotting basically everything. Now, that's a case where notice there's uh, oh, well, there is some stuff. Occasionally, when you uh, when they blow up right as they die, um, the explosion from Hail Hydra will actually um, blow up the loot. There's a landlord. We can one-shot those two. Piece of cake. The range 24 is a pretty good range on it holding to fire this thing basically I'm holding down the right keypad and as soon as I'm in range it fires so it's also much easier to use <laughs> there I didn't even have to do anything it just you know killed him um, it kills things that I'm not aware of oh just to show you you can also ranged kill and one shot now um, Enderman as well that works on the uh, evolved Enderman uh, this also works on of course the uh, charged creepers uh, one shot zombie crab man and blow him up just to give you a freaking measure um, these guys are a piece of cake now so in other words, we are open for business. Um, yeah, 
guess that's all there is to say about this. Uh, we now have some offense. And of course, uh, with looting three in it, I've now gotten seven Ender Pearls and two for Ender Pearls while we've been running around. And also two Emeralds and two Diamonds from stuff as well. Um, let's. There's a couple more wizards there. Just to give you one more look at this gun before we move on. Um, and again, it's a combination of the gun and the Astral Sorcery perks. But the gun itself is going to just kick ass. Um, let's take a look at what happens. Now, I'm not firing at all. So you can see the little hits that are happening from when we get in a crowd like this. Uh, there will be little hits like that and that. And then explosions. So the combination... Oh, here we go. Uh, so if a Kelly head is cut off, two more shall take its place. So you can see I'm getting shot by arrows. And if you look right above my health bar, there is a yellow bar that is absorption for which will absorb damage. Oh, and things died off. Let's find some more things. Here, let's go over here. And so I'm not taking damage either. And this works on invisible stuff, like the uh, dwellers uh, tend to be invisible and sneak up on you. <coughs> but you can see that... Uh, they can't sneak up on Dark Traveler and uh, Hail Hydra. So again, I got hit, and I now have the Kellyn pipe piece. Hail Hydra has given me absorption, so I'm not taking damage because of the absorption. course I can still one shot uh, I think everything here now so I can one shot um, if I actually shoot I can one shot um, I think every monster here now thanks to the combination of of the uh, gun and the astral sorcery perks um, so I came here and hunted a bunch of um, of uh, ancient golems because they're not spawning in my savanna. In my savanna mob farm, and I'm not really prepared to uh, deal with moving them. And then also um, evolved endermen, no problem. Multiple pearls. I think I've made my point. <laughs> we now have some offense. And some defense. Um, and now let's take a look here. If we uh, hit shift, we are at 73,600 out of 80,000. So we definitely used uh, a chunk of our power, um, especially over in Landia where we were actually shooting things. Uh, but it's not a lot. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, so our offense is good. Uh, I'm go ahead and throw that in there a minute while we talk about other stuff. Um, go ahead and eat. You'll also notice that I have one and a half yellow hearts. Um, if we look down at my heart bar, uh, that is also from uh, Astral Sorcery Perks. Uh, for right this moment, I'm just going to throw all this junk in here. Um, 
I started taking a look at oh the, that's the reason I wanted to come here was I also did one other thing for offense which was I do not like the Lich King fight I think his little shields that you have to knock down are a pain in the ass um, so I saw on a two Asgard video that the blazing ray from embers rekindled will actually um, bypass those because it's straight magic damage like a splash potion or something um, as opposed to the uh, as opposed to like uh, projectile or melee damage um, let's just show you what you this it's sort of like a bow you cock it up and you can hold it um, the more you draw it back the stronger your bolt will be and when you release it, it does a bolt of ember now the weird thing here is that uh, you have to have a mantle cartridge in your offhand while you're using it. So it does require that. Um, you charge this up by, uh, if we go in here, um, there is one of these machines. Here's a copper charger. So you can put it in. Let's go ahead and top this off. So if I right click that on there, it goes into the middle and it only took a second to recharge it but so you gotta make a mantle cartridge and a blazing ray and we're gonna try that out against the Lich King because I hate that fight uh, also you can see I've tried my hand at decorating here this is ugly as hell and it's not gonna stay this way um, but I just sort of wanted to see what certain materials looked like um, I'd sort of like to do more of this material however it requires a whole bunch of uh, drops from ancient golems so it might have to wait until we have um, a, a mob farm that uh, collects ancient golems I do really like this block the archaic edge but it burns through lots of the uh, lots of the bricks uh, we can also make the ashen bricks and the kamenite pretty easily here's another ashen stone so we can make these pretty easily one of the problems I'm having is that I'm sort of addicted to the run speed bonus of concrete um, and most of the concrete does not look great with other colors so basically black and white are the only two colors really of concrete that I feel work well with other um, blocks I do sort of like this uh, trodden bricks black concrete uh, but it doesn't match any of the blacks that are else any of the other blacks that are going on like the blacks that are in the ocean ashen brick um, and then the Kamenite doesn't match the um, this stone very well so that's why I was playing around with this is copper sheet metal and these are factory blocks uh, but this is all going to change this is me just sort of playing around with color palettes and seeing what I think I might like um, but I wanted to show you that I'm not completely devoid of interest in making things look nice. I do have a tendency to focus first on the uh, utilitarian <laughs> things of just making it good or, you know, making it functional and then working on the uh, form later. But uh, we will get around to decorating as areas are finished and as I get access to more materials actually what I really would like to use down in there is possibly I might go with some seared brick in there um, to see if that matches the concrete floor the black concrete floor better uh, and I might use some smooth basalt from netherex so I gathered some of that and some of this abyssal stone especially the green I think would make a nice complement to the orange of the embers uh, so we're going to take a look at that stuff when we get it so now let's take a look at um, uh, what I did on Astral Sorcery. I made a uh, platform, as you can see. It's a big one because there's lots of big structures. Uh, this was pretty easy. Um, I made myself an angel block, which is pretty cheap in this mod pack, um, to just set it in space so I could use it as an anchor for building. Um, and then I just bashed this out with the building gadgets tools. Um, and... What we've got here is the attunement altar. It's currently set up as an attunement to um, Lucerna because uh, I did go ahead and make a uh, 
Lucerda, Lucerda Atud uh, Celestial Crystal, because we're going to need an Atud one to Lucerda to make the observatory for finding the last faint constellations um, as we progress through this system. Um, you can also see I have a bunch of um, maxed out celestial crystals here that we can use. And this is a maxed out celestial crystal in a celestial crystal uh, enhanced collector confirmation. Um, it has some red particles in it because it is attuned to Dissidia, like I am, which is the damage one. And you can see I've used the linking tool to link it to here. If you've never used this structure before, one thing to keep in mind is that when you build it, there needs to be an empty block of space uh, between this chiseled marble and the celestial uh, crystal that you place. Um, however, when you're completing the uh, structure, uh, it needs to be completed within 0.5 seconds. So if the last thing you do is put this on here, and there's a block in the way here, um, you need to place this and then immediately click the thing under it to destroy it to complete the structure. Um, so I just used netherrack. It is also quite possible that you could place the uh, celestial crystal up here, remove whatever block you used to pop it on, and then just use one of these blocks as your last block. You can also see that I'm using um, our, I made a spare glimmer crystal. This is the Embers Rekindled crystal that you make to use to open the Twilight Portal. And it also uh, forms a, a, acts as a rechargeable light source. So I've thrown a bunch of these out here uh, for now since I don't have this completely lit up. We've got our Starlight Infuser. Uh, we've got a full bucket of uh, Starlight here. Uh, this thing is now... Uh, at full starlight which is good because of this collector crystal I did try removing the uh, lenses from these uh, spectral relays which also help load up light into your stuff you can see these particles moving towards this block moving in the direction of my uh, table uh, those show that this is linked to my table uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure I'm pretty sure that when I upgrade to the final altar, the iridescent altar, and replace that table, that this will still be enough to keep us at maximum starlight throughout the day. Um, so as soon as I'm sure of that, I will probably remove these two platforms. Um, and as I said, I definitely uh, like Dissidia for extra damage. Uh, I'm going to pause right here and check the time, run time. And we'll also go in the Wayback Machine and I'll show you like the 30 second video of me attuning to Dissidia. And you can see I have a bunch of uh, constellations in the sky. Uh, there's Dissidia. There's my baby up there. It looks like a couple arrows. Uh, and we've also got a bunch of the, uh, I think the uh, first five are called Bright. And then the sort of purplish tinged ones, the next seven are called dim or faint maybe dim and then the last um, last like four or five um, are called uh, faint or dim anyway I'm going to pause here and uh, there's no narration on this next little 30 second clip of me being uh, attuned I just like it and I want to capture it in my video series be right back Okay, so there we are. We are attuned. Uh, we've got a decent amount of time, at least enough for the first boss. I think I covered everything I wanted to cover here. Um, our armor is good. We've got two doses of protection for, two doses of fire protection for. We got all sorts of other goodness on here. Um, let's go to, to the Twilight Forest and I'll show you what's going on there. 
So my co-rail um, Ankh of Prey, which I use to pray at the decorative grave back there, while I was farting around, playing with my guns and whatnot, and leveling up my astral sorcery perks, uh, my three hours ran up and I uh, was able to pray it there, and I got a saturation buff. So what I did with that saturation buff was mining in this uh, dimension sucks. There's tons of stone, tons of dirt, tons of wood in the form of uh, roots, and tons of water. And it's just a sucky place to do this. So what I did was I just embraced the suck and I just vein mine the snot out of everything, as you can see here. So I do have Depth Strider on my boots, and I do have Respiration on my helmet. So I just said to hell with it. I didn't even worry about it. I just, as I just realized, I left my gun. So I just vein mine the snot everything out, out of everything, um, and called it good. The other thing you can do, uh, which helps in this dimension if you're not used to doing it, is uh, you can dual wield. You can have your shovel in your off hand and your mining pick in your main hand. And then when you're coming through here, you can vein mine stone and you can vein mine dirt. And you can vein mine stone and you can run out of... <laughs> this is why the saturation helped. And you can see I'm pretty much just ignoring the water and walking through it. Um, now I didn't find a ton of stuff here that was new and different or interesting. Um, you can see my cave illuminator that we set up when we first zoned in here uh, is putting lights everywhere. We're still getting some spawning because I think I've gone outside of its area. Um, here we have some draconium. I'm going to go ahead and pick this up. Um, that's the only sort of new and fun thing I found here, uh, ore-wise. Um, now this up here is a Shoggoth. Uh, I found a Shoggoth lair. And I don't exactly know what that is yet, but we found one. Now the one thing I haven't done is I haven't made an exit out of this. You can see I just ripped the snot out of this whole area. Got a lot of stuff. Um, I have stacks and stacks of the... Uh, of the crisp, simple crystals that we need. Um, but anyway, I'm going to pause here and get back out of here. You can see last time I just pillared up to the top here. <laughs> so let me get out of here and go get my laser gun out of my charger, and I will be right back. Well, and I guess one thing I can do is I can show you that, of course, we have the home command, which is usable every once in a while, uh, but we also have these Corail tombstone things, uh, which I can click on and teleport back to this grave which these are bound to and if we uh, put that away you can see I have tons of them and boom gonna get myself another point and check my Ankh of Prey I guess that's all good remember to pick up my laser gun Never leave home without it. And let's see. Should be good to go now. So let's go whoop the Naga. That sounds like good fun. And we should now have tons of defense and offense to make most of these bosses, if not all of these bosses, absolute. Whoops. Wrong dimension. to make all of these uh, Twilight Forest uh, bosses trivial. So let's go ahead and grab out our fly-in stuff and let's get this out of my hand. I only like dual wielding a shovel when I'm actually vein mining the snot out of stuff. Alright, so we can't fly here. So I did go ahead and make a magic map so the magic map is 
one of these, a magic map focus, which is a torch berry, which are those little glowing berries on the ceiling underground, some glowstone and a raven feather. So those you get from, there are lots of little birds around here. Sometimes they're called tiny birds. Um, sometimes the birds around here, you'll see a forest raven. Um, so you get those feathers from the forest ravens around here. Um, they're not too hard to find if you just wander around a bit. Um, and then uh, we made the blank magic map by just putting paper around that. Uh, and then I right clicked it. So if we took here, put it in our hands and then sort of look down, uh, we are up in the uh, northwest corner of that map. Um, and so there's a Naga to the, or we're in the northeast corner, um, so there is a Naga to the southwest of us. And I sort of already knew that, but um, good to double check. So now we'll go here and go there and yada yada. And we'll sort of wander off here, slam into a tree. And there's the Naga over there. Hey, there it is. And let's take a look at how the laser gun does against this. I think it did fairly well. And it did charge us and hit us, but it immediately gave us absorption, and we took no damage. Uh, so now you see why I spent a few hours working on my offense and defense before coming here, um, because that was super simple. Um, I'm going to come back here and steal a bunch of this Naga Stone. Um, I do like the Naga Stone for building. Um, I think it looks pretty cool. There's some cool um, stuff here, like the Naga Stone pillars look cool. Um, just Naga Stone in general looks cool. So we're gonna come. I'm gonna come back later and uh, steal all this garbage. But I think that's about it. So uh, we probably have time for the next boss, which I think is the Minotaur, uh, which means head into a swamp. It looks like there's one. We look down here, I think that's it to that direction. Yeah. So let's go ahead and go on that way. Now some of these you have to do extra stuff. Oh no, wait, this doesn't look right. This is Dark Forest. We don't want to be here yet. You can see there's there's stuff going on here. This is because we haven't done the Minotaur first. You gotta do these guys in order or it gets weird on you. Let's take a look at the journey map. Basically what we're looking for is so there's the Lich Tower. Uh, we are looking for Swamp. It might be past the, uh, I'm not sure where we're going. Swamp might be past the dark forest, so let's try and go over it. Yeah, I think we're heading in the right direction here. All right. Okay, so the black particles are still in effect, so I'm not exactly sure. Let me pause here and figure out uh, if there's anything we need to do to get this to go away. Those make you hungry, I believe. Uh, and I don't want to eat up all my food. 
So let me pause here and I'll be right back. Oh, right. So we need to go fit kill the uh, Twilight Lich first. Um, so that is back up there. And that thing, the final building, which I don't believe all the details of that have been uh, finished yet. But that thing's sort of in our way. We'll see if we can fly past it. Ow. All right. So that was no fun. Let's go ahead and uh, <laughs> whatever. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, just get out of here and come back. We'll approach the Twilight Lich from uh, the other direction. Uh, now that's weird. Why is my uh, My uh, bobble stopped working. There it goes. Okay, so the Lich King Tower is down there ish, I believe. I don't know what I'm doing. This is only my second time uh, doing the Twilight Forest, so please bear with me as I fumble around. Pretty sure it was over here, somewhere. Hello, tree. There it is. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, my fat fingered things. This is why I was afraid of Skyblock. I was pretty sure I would just kill myself. So it looks like the Lich's Tower is right up against the whole thorny end area so this may be a problem or maybe not I don't know doesn't seem to be locked up so we're probably okay so we're just gonna try and I should probably put my uh, boots on I'm gonna try and get up to the top here with our sling sl slime sling Hop from area to area here. As one do. Of course, there's other ways of doing this. You can, like, uh, we got to stay out of that rain. Hope we can actually reach the boss here. We might have to find a different castle. Hello, dwarf rabbit. Fancy meeting you here. Uh, he's probably in this one. Let's go take a look. Oh, and we should probably get out. I did want to try the blazing ray to see if that'll knock down his shields. So let's go ahead and get those out. So we need both the blazing ray and we need uh, the mantle car cartridge in our offhand. 
And then I'm also going to have my uh, laser pistol handy because it's probably more likely going to be what we kill him with. Blazing Ray looks cool and all, uh, but it doesn't do anywhere near the damage that our... Uh... And yes, I realize an axe would be faster, but I'd have to take it out of my backpack. So we're going to try and just sort of uh, find an entrance here. And maybe the axe would have been faster. Uh -huh. I see the yellow boss bar up above. So we are in business. That chandelier's in the way. Blazing Ray did successfully take so the Blazing Ray did successfully take off his uh, shields so that was beautiful oh, let's, let me get rid of some of this junk um, so the Blazing Ray definitely did help make this fight less annoying for me um, so that's good. It did take me a minute to figure out, remember which one was the king, um, and shoot him. Let's go ahead and uh, let's take the Naga Trophy back out. We got a Scepter of Fortification. Various crap. All right. So we got our trophy and all. Let's go ahead and eat. Gain our health back. So we did lose a little bit of health there. Um, I may have wandered over into that rain, which is uh, the um, domain protection for the uh, end tower, I believe. Uh, so that's a no bueno. We don't want to wander into that. Um, and if I were to redo this, which we might have to because... Uh, because we um, <laughs> so blowing up. I'm just shooting a few things here to see if I get any more travelers books log uh, opening up. Yeah, that rain's no fun. ahead and steal that uh, yeah yeah that thing's shooting at me I'm gonna go ahead and steal that all right I stole the spawner um, Apparently you can soap touch these and get them intact, which is sort of cool. Uh, not sure how that works. I haven't dealt with Apotheosis, which is the mod that it says those are a part of. But uh, let's go ahead and throw that stuff in there. And we can put away that and the cartridge, because I think uh, it's so slow that it's not going to be something I use other than on a Twilight Lich King is probably the only time I'll ever use it. But it was very handy because trying to hit back those uh, um, those his fireballs at him to get his shields down is a super pain in the ass so that was an excellent tip there that I got from two Asgard. Um, so 
let's see I'm not too worried about looting this place uh, there may be some good uh, Twilight Forests type stuff here uh, steel leaf and ironwood and whatnot that we need uh, but I can come back and do that off camera if necessary um, so let's see yeah we've only used up uh, a little bit 1800 RF of our laser guns so we're still good there this is now going to open up the, um, sh uh, the swamp to us. Uh, I'm going to go off camera, check our run time, and then head to the swamp. And if we have time, uh, we will go into the Minotaur maze. However, working our way through that maze is probably going to take 20 minutes anyway, so we might save that for next episode. Uh, we'll be back in a moment. Okay, yeah, I went ahead and used my Corail Tombstone tablet to uh, come home. And uh, we are ending the near the nearing the end of this uh, episode, so let's just take a look at the quest book and see what we accomplished, and uh, then we'll have to have a do a do a Twilight Forest Part Two, where we uh, take a look at uh, the rest of these bosses. Uh, there will be less talking about uh, laser guns and uh, and astral sorcery perks then, so we'll be able to accomplish a bit more. Hopefully, get through. Um, most of them next time. Uh, so the Naga Trophy. Okay, so here it sort of helps explain things, which I probably should have looked here, but so the Naga is the first boss. Neither he nor his courtyard have any prerequisites or protections. Uh, killing the Naga and picking up one of his scales unlock the Lich Tower. Cool, cool. Tin Rack, nice. Twilight Lich, um... Defeating the Lich and picking up one of his magical scepters will remove the protection on the swamp and allow you access to the labyrinth in the swamp. And another tin rack. Nice. And now the Minnow Shroom trophy. Defeating the Minnow Shroom will remove the protections on the fire swamp and allow you access to the Hydra. Excellent. Um, so we're going to hit him next. Um, cool, cool. The other thing we can talk about briefly here, because I'm going to probably start into it uh, in between this episode and the next, is I have 584 simple crystals in here from my vein mining extravaganza. In, uh, and I think I've got more here. Um, simple and another stack here. Uh, but I think I might have some somewhere else as well. Uh, but anyway... Uh, we need to get into that whole system. We did get the uh, Book of Knowledge when we uh, went to the Twilight Forest. If we right click on this, uh, we apparently need to do research, uh, which involves making a bunch of blank inscription tiles and then te teaching them the alphabet and yada yada. I have never done this stuff, but... Uh, we need to get our bright crystal uh, figured out so that I can get credit for all the astral sorcery work I did. Uh, I'm not sure what all this does. So I gotta look into all of this and figure out how this all works. Um, yeah, I don't know. We'll figure it out. So far what I figured out was that the uh, tiles Ooh. Uh, here are the tiles so you end up making one for each letter in the alphabet I think and you need to start out with a bunch of blank uh, tiles which require ironwood so we are going to have to go rummage around uh, the twilight forest and get us a bunch of ironwood uh, so we can look for different ways to make ironwood see if there's any shortcuts or interesting things uh, we will be able to use the arc furnace to recycle things uh, into a good amount of ironwood. Unfortunately, this is says eight um, ingots for an ironwood plate uh, thing, but that's if it's at full um, health or you know full dur durability. Um, since most of the stuff you get is like pretty beaten up, you get considerably less. So we might have to look at repair options. Um, I think the energetic infuser uh, actually has a uh, has an augmentation 
that allows you to repair things. So that might be, oh, but I think I clicked on that and I think it had no recipe. So that might be, let's see. Allows for damage items to be repaired, augment flux reconstruction for the energetic infuser. But when I click on this, I don't get anything. There's nothing pops up. So this may be uh, disabled in this mod pack. So I gotta figure out how to repair things in this mod pack, preferably without, you know, using up the material we're trying to get for recycling. Um, so that's one of my missions. And then figuring out how to deal with this whole uh, tile situation. Uh, I did see a video, um, so I sort of know what to do here. Um, Skystone. Skystone is made uh, basically out of the... It's from smelting Skystone, and then the Skystone is basically made from the Skystone dust, which you can make... Um, which you can sieve up and then put through the lava bucket or you know a lava barrel so you can see here uh, my lava barrel uh, feeds directly into this and keeps the uh, stone barrel under there done uh, and i have made a bunch of sky stone which we can now smelt um, and i've just basically got that set up where um, it inserts um, anything that is pulled so as soon as this lava turns into an item it gets extracted and turned put into here, whether it's obsidian or skystone or whatever. But then also to make that two-way, uh, I set up a filter so it's to say it can extract skystone dust and insert it in here. Uh, so I ran all of my skystone dust through there, and we have a bunch of this which we can throw at our smelter. And I'm curious if it makes one or two. Looks like it makes one, which is fine. We have plenty. Uh, I don't even know if we need more than 26 of these, but which means I probably shouldn't uh, smelt all of this in case we need some of the other stuff. Anyway, so that's uh, what's going on with me. I'm gonna look into this Lordcraft stuff, um, try and figure out that. Um, bright crystal this is the bad boy I need which requires this crafting workbench which requires carbonite which I believe we find at the top of the um, Urgas tower so we'll need to get that and it requires some steel leaf which I believe we can find in some of the dungeons in there um, some mana infused dust which requires some torch berries. So I'll have to probably root around and find out some more torch berries. Uh, yeah, we'll have to figure out if, if uh, I did t uh, take a, uh, I did grab a Twilight Forest Skeleton Druid spotter. I'm not sure if uh, Skeleton Druids drop torch berries, but if they do, that might be a good source of torch berries for us. I can investigate that because there was another one of these spawners. Um, oops, what was I going to do? Oh, I was going to see if there was a skeleton druid. And it doesn't tell us what they drop. Um, I'll go kill some more skeleton druids in the because uh, there's another spawner right by by where I picked up this one, and if they drop uh, berries, then we will uh, set something up to just harvest berries from that. Um, my bucket over at my starling refuser is full, but I'm still processing the huge amounts of <laughs> rock crystals. There's basically unlimited rock crystals here in this mod pack, so I'm still. Uh, filling up a second barrel just so that I never have to worry about liquid starlight. All right, so torch berries um, and steel leaf and um, making the runes and that kind of stuff. 
Uh, that's what I'll be doing sort of background and figuring out how to repair things so that we can recycle steel leaf and ironwood armor. And uh, I'll probably go ahead and film the next episode right after this or, you know, after I have dinner. And, uh, and we'll go on, continue on to tackle those uh, next Twilight bosses. So we'll put that in a part two to this. Uh, anyway, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I will be back. Ooh, that means these Twilight Forest bosses are going to give us a decent amount of rack. i got to figure out what I want. I think I might want uh, maybe Saturation next. Saturation is super handy. You will occasionally have to take it off to eat stuff, but... That's 64 rack. Um, I'm pretty sure saturation is what I want next. Ooh, maybe strength. Strength one isn't that impressive though. Creative dungeon locator. 200 rack. Well, we're not going to do that quite yet. I'm not particularly super interested. I mean, these swords look really nice. However, um, yeah, we might circle back around to those. I'm just not sure. Anyway, I'm going to pause here. Uh, I'm going to go eat, and then I'm going to film the next episode where we're going to continue to hunt down bosses in the Twilight Forest. See you next time. Bye.